Right, hello people, and as promised, we're back with this big fella, my Bits and Bobs box. What do I use? What do I make to get through the deer fishing? How do I make my rigs, this, that, and the other? It's all in here. A while back, I had a little box. I'll quickly get it for you. There it is there. I bought this from b and quite a while ago, and it's quickly, I've outgrown it very, very quickly. And I was going to buy another one till I saw the price of it. 30, was it 30 quid? 36.99. I nearly had a heart attack. 36.99. There's not 36.99 in same, are there? No chance. So, I bumped into this guy. And this was 36.99. I thought, well, fair enough, it's the same price as that, but it's a lot more substantial. It's a lot bigger. I put a lot more things into it, so I had to justify spending 36.99. What did I get for my money? Well, for a start off, it's got a top container. It's got a drawer. It's got a big container on the back for blinds, X, X, Y, and Z, God knows what. I turn it round. It's got compartments on the back. $36.99 well spent. My tackle's all in one place. The boss isn't on my back, giving it this. Happy days. So, I'll quickly talk you through it. What have we got? We've got a compound on the top, which I'll quickly just take it off for you so you can see. You just press that button in and it lifts off. You can just like quickly come and have a look. When I'm making terminal tattle, as you've seen us do many a time on Sandman's tattle time, I've made whatever I've made. Let's see if I can see it. I've made a batch of. Um, Rotten bottom rigs, there they are there, they just get thrown into there, that's where they are. If I've been making some uh, fast links, there they are, look at that big guy. Keep in mind, there is your normal one right there. That was made up of 3.5mm, I was having a bit of a laugh of one of my mates. <laughs> right over the top. But, it's brought us on to a new subject while we're here, and this is a little bit tight to get serious. Those who follow Sandman's Tackle Time have probably saw a post that was pulled by one of our, well, he's a very good friend of mine, Stevie Graham, about people making their own terminal tackle. And he brought up a valid point. He got a bit stick for it, but in my opinion, he was right where he said. He's bringing up the, the opinion of people making fast links, Gemini clips, X, Y, and Z out of 18 gauge stainless steel. 18 gauge stainless steel is a bog standard stainless steel, it's nothing flash, it's just what you're using standard grip lids, that's all it is. I've used 18 gauge stainless a long time um, and it's, it's, it's good for one thing, making grip wires, that's it. It's no good for anything that I do. I'm going to emphasise this point, please, 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 if you are going to have a go at making the stuff that I make, be safe. Do it right. Get the right materials. Don't use 18 gauge stainless. I've even seen people using hair clips. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Somebody's going to get hurt. The stuff that I use is not specialist stuff. You can go and buy it. Yes, it's expensive, but I'd rather pay the money and be safe than to put a, a sinker through somebody's bloody leg or worse still through the head. That's just not acceptable. So please, if you're going to have a go at this, just do it right. Be safe. Please, I beg you, be safe. 316 grade stainless steel can be purchased at a company called Lane Gate in Pallion. It ranges from 45 to 55 pound per tube in 5 kilo tubes. The tubes muck on and off like that. I've stripped the stickers off that because I'm going to use the, the tube for something else. But that, what's, that's what they're coming. Yes, it's expensive, but it, you get what you pay for. It's good gear. It is very solid. For what we do as fishermen, it's probably way over the top. I've got a very good friend of mine who makes a lot of sinkers to very lots of paper around there. He uses our ex exact stuff for sinker tops. No problem whatsoever, because it's good gear. My mate wouldn't dream of using 18 gauge stainless in a sinker top. But I know people that do. Uh -uh, wrong thing. Somebody's going to get hurt. If you're going to use, make fast links, 316 grade. That'll do your heavy stuff. 
you can go down to 16 grade stainless. Now there's a difference between 18 and 16. A total difference. 16 grade, <coughs> excuse me. 16 grade stainless is a hell of a lot stronger than 18 gauge. I use it all the time, believe us. I can use it on the gates. Here's your perfect example. There is a rotten bottom rig, as you've seen us make time and time again. That there is 316 grade, 1.6 mil stainless steel TIG welding rod. That on the bottom is 16 gauge stainless steel weld, uh, sorry not welding, stainless steel rods. Them can be purchased at Andy Rutherford's down there on Roper Avenue. But again, I'm emphasising the point, 16 gauge, not 18. 18 grip wires, end of story. 16, acceptable for the likes of that and acceptable for scratching. If you are going to be flicking a rod bit 20 yards or something, just a little bit over the head thump with a three ounce sink rod, perfectly fine. You're going up the river, you're casting 40, 50 yards, just gentle lobs, absolutely fine. But 16 gauge stainless with a six or seven ounce sink on it, doing the full pendulum, no good, no good whatsoever. When it's constructed onto that, that gate comes up, that bead comes over, the majority of the force is being took out on the 316 grade. They're absolutely fine. They've been tested by big casters, believe me, by big casters. I didn't invent this thing. A mate of mine called Gus McGee came up with this idea well before I even saw, saw this. And he had all different people testing this out. These are tested and proven. They are solid gear, made with the right gear. 316 grade and 16 gauge. You can even make the gate, if you would like, out of 316 grade as well. So the whole thing's uh, 316 grade. I'm, I'm talking very stern about this because I, I feel very strongly about it. I don't want anybody to get hurt. If you're going to copy what I do, please do it right. That's all I ask. Do it right. Anyway, you've heard enough of me bobbling on. Let's crack on with the rest of the subject. Here we go. So we've got your rotten bottom rigs. There's your fast links. As you can see there, there's one or two fast links. That I've uh, made up over the years, right over the months. <coughs> there is some Gemini clips. Them ones there are with. Get some bubs of all sorts. Them ones are with the bait clip, and then you've got these guys in here, and these are the ones without the bait clip. I've got various hooks in here. These are size three or Sakuma mantas. With wait, whatever hooks in there, it's three or and there's only three different types. There'll be Sakuma, sorry, four Sakuma Mantas, Sakuma Manta Extra, three or Vikings, and the uh, size three or Big Mouth that you can be purchased at UK Hooks only. Um, I'll crack on with them a little bit later on about them hooks. Basically, what they are, they are a, a hook that is virtually the same pattern as the Sakuma Manta Extra. They're the same strength, they're the same size. The only difference is that the shank's about two or three mil longer. I was talking to Mike one time down there at UK Hooks over on, uh, I think Isle of Man or Isle of White, wherever he's at. And uh, I think he said that they hold the, the British top record or something. Very strong hook to say the least. Best thing is, half the price. I'm not calling Sakura or nothing like that. It's just the price. Please, have to get it down a bit, man. Anyway, so that's that. On the other side with the hooks, wherever is an extra size 4 o the majority of them there are 4 o Sakuma Manta Extras or the 4 o Big Mouths again from uh, Mike down there at Yoki Hooks. I've got Pearl Baits, I'm not a big fan of these, but you never know if they come in handy. A wide selection of uh, swivels in there and just some other little bits and bobs. Anyway, so that's the, the terminal tap. I'll put that to one side. Now, in the top of this box, you'll have to come over and have a look. It's just pliers and bits and bobs if you can get a look into there, which is very handy. Nice big space. I've got pliers, files, bits and bobs just get hoid in there. So now that we've gone from the top of the box, I'll have to tilt it forward. I'll show you what's on the inside of the box if you like to just zoom in on that. And all we've got in there is just the likes of files, pliers, just bits and bobs, just hide them in there, and they're out the way. Anyway, that's that bit. If I turn the box around, I've also got some room at the back of it. 
Here is my Ziplex short stuff. It's only a joke. What this is used for, I'll quickly grab a reel. It's just a line spooler, that's all it is. There you go. New spooler line on my me, me, me line tidy. Come through that ring there. Nice, sturdy, done. That's all there is. I just need the zip like, zip like short stuff because it's short. <laughs> Basically it. Anyway, so that just slots down and into there. Again, it's out the way. That's a telescopic rod, just use it for the same thing. That's full of 16 gauge stainless steel, what we've just been talking about. Not 18 gauge, 16. These two tubes here, I'll get this one out first. What these are is the base, they're just the tubes. When you buy your 316 grade, they come in a big, big tube. I've got one here, I'll just show you. There you go, that's the way they come. A bit boiling water, wash the stickers off rather than throw it away. Do your bit for the country there, a bit recycling. And um, um, washed it down. I put some silver tape around it to make it look pretty. Slap the zip next stick on because I'm sad. <laughs> and uh, that was that. And what I've got in here is what a lot of users talking about. Here they are. This is um, the bait loaders. Now, if I take them out the way there, there they are. Now that stuff there is extremely strong. I have never ever had stainless steel. There's your 316 grid, 1.6 mil. That's it there. Look at the difference. 3.5 mil. Um, very, very expensive to say the least. I think there's about 50 lengths there. There's a lot of people being messaging us, emailing us, X, Y, and Z. Paul, where do I get these bait loaders from? Can I have one this up and the other? Listen, I'm going to make them. I'm going to make all these. Them. The only problem I've got is posting them. The price to post that to somebody is probably going to cost more than what it's worth. So I mean, if you will to pay the postage, I'll send it to you, no problem at all. But they'll be coming out soon and I'll, uh, I'll sort that out for you. No problem whatsoever. Right, so we'll just leave them there. And that's where, that's where that comes in handy. So I can plonk all them little bits and bobs into there. I'm just doing this quick because I'm on the video. I'll leave that there, I'll sort that out a bit. Then we'll come to this guy. This one will be a ton weight. And what I do is for spares, my 316 grade I'll cut it in half, just so I've got a big tube line about. And I keep it like this. And there it is there. There's a lot of lengths into there. You can see that there. That's all 316 grade, marine grade, stainless steel, TIG welding rods. All about 500 mil long. There's a lot, of, a lot of lengths in there, I believe. A hell of a lot. Anyway, that lip goes up to there. That's simply there's an elastic, elastic strap, and that just sits there, and that's it. It's done. It's as simple as that. Neat and tidy, and like I said earlier on, everything's out the way. So I haven't got the gaffer on my back. Right then, so that's the back. Very briefly. It's also got a handle, you can press the button, and that goes up, move it around. So I think, correct as if I'm wrong, that's £36 well spent. I think you get a lot for your money. We'll turn it round. It's got a nice sturdy handle on it. All right, news. The lid simply clips back on the top very easily. That's it, it's on, it's done. You can also remove all of that by this, the clip there. Turn to the other side, there's a clip there, like that, and the whole thing lifts up to there. So if you wanted, and you didn't want to take the whole thing, you could simply get hold of that and carry that like little red rhyme if you like. Sort it out. Anyway, let's move that to one side. We're now here, where it also comes with yet another handle here. So if you wanted, you could carry that there. On the inside, you've got a tray. There it is there. This has just got all sorts in it. I'll quickly talk you through. Black beads. 
These little containers, I found these in the pound shop, three for a quid. I think they're absolutely fantastic for the, quid, for the money. A, a pound for three. There's black beads in there. I've got cascade swivels in there. Size three train swivels in there. Bits and bobs of plastic tubing. Crimps. Power swivels. Check these out. These are great, these. Been Andy Rutherford's the other way. Big crap on Andy. Good lad. Really is. Nazi stuff. And he been telling us about these power swivels. He's had them in for ages. There they are there. And uh, I'll just quickly get a little point. That guy there. Break and strain of £275. And that little guy there. I mean, honestly. If I had a... I have. I actually have got a ruler. If I put the ruler there, you can see the size of it. That there is seven mil, and that is a hundred pound breaking strain for your hooks nuts. Absolutely fantastic! So that's what the, the majority of them are in there. Power swivels. There's a few different little bits and bobs in there, but mainly power swivels. I think they're great. Excellent idea. A little bit more expensive, but they will be like them. Obviously, it costs a little bit more to make. Then I've got these little guys. A lot of you might have seen these in the past, but I've, I, I've never seen them before, I don't know why. They're made by Shakespeare Sod. If you can see that there. They're an inline bait clip. So, if I put them in there, if you can imagine that piece of wire there being an 80 pound shot later, you can put that through. So I'm going to finish it. So that was your 80 pound shot later, that would go there, like that. Obviously that see that was connected to the bottom of your sinker. There's your bait clip right there. Here's the best thing. 99 pence for 20. Fishing Republic down at Hendon. Happy days. So what said right, Tony, I'll have a few of them. I didn't think he's got any left. So please Tony, if you're watching this video, I'd really appreciate it on your next order you get some more of them because they're great. Excellent idea. I've also got these fellas, I'm a big fan of these. Any fish anywhere, baits, very small, cone shaped. Um, when I'm making my rigs, I like everything to be like streamlined, sort of like small. I didn't like over the top and out like that. Um, so they come into the one. Um, PVC children, I use that for rotten bottom rigs. These your good old chino hooks. That's the mustard version there. Awesome hooks there, awesome hooks. Again, Andy Rutherford's four pound fifty for thirty. Very cheap. And in here, I've got these are pre-cut lengths for for your rotten buttons. I've put one in there, so I always know where it is. Just pre-cut lengths, a couple of hundred in there, so it can just sit there. If I ever fall short, I always know that I've got that to fall back on, if need be. If you'd like to just quickly come in and just have a quick look, this is what you can do. I've got a wide selection of Sakuma hooks, some more black beads there, some sequins, cascade swivels, bigger crimps, bits and bobs, just different stuff where I use on a day to day basis to get me through my day of fishing. Anyway, we'll uh, quickly put these back into here. Uh, I really don't. I really don't think them boxes there for for, a, for the sake of a cup, a cup like, quid a piece for three. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, so that's that bit, and we're now going to come to the, the last bit. And that's this big tray that you've got at the bottom. Here I've got just various spits and bobs. There's some traces there. Um, I'll talk you through that in a minute. What that's all about. A couple more of them containers with different bits and bobs in. Various spools of amnesia, line where I use, some more spools of amnesia. There's uh, some of that uh, ASO Ultra Flex line. I went and got the 40, 50, and 60, as you can see there. I know what a lot of you are saying about that stuff. The jury's still out on this. I've heard various reports on it. Some people say it's really good, some people say it's really bad. And uh, one of my mates, Lee Burton, he's a pretty good angler up this way. It said that he was using it, and I thought, well, if he's using it, it must be alright. So I'll give it a go. 
I was taught to several other angles and saying, oh, Paul, you've made the biggest mistake in your life, get rid of it, it's nothing, it's, it's crap, it's absolutely no good. So I'm like, oh, wasted that for now, like, it was only 3 99 So I put it on the back burner, thought, no, thought no, nothing more of it, until I went down Andy Rutherford's. Andy Rutherford, as everybody knows in round A, Andy, he knows his stuff, he's got his own tattoo shop, very successful, had it for a very, very long time, and he's been used. I actually walked into his shop, and he was making a rig in front of us, using this stuff, and I went, have you had any problems with it? He said, no. It's absolutely fantastic, very subtle, not so lovely, this, that and the other. Says, I found the same, I thought I'd knotted up really good. So, I'm going to try it myself and I'll make my own mind up. I'll report back to you in the near future with this. But I've used this on several matches, I've had fish on it, I've never had any problem with it up to now. So touch wood, it's working alright. And that's called Asso Ultra Flex, 40, 50 inch, 60 pound breaking straight. The rest of the little bits and bobs that I've got in the bottom of here is... Um, Impact shields and just various just various bits of bolts, that's all they are. Nothing special. Hitting onto this line just briefly before I go up. Oh, and I've also got a, a, a spare bag of half finished rotten bottom reeds. I'll finish them at a later date. What I tend to do is if I'm making something, and I'll make the same for argument's sake, I'm gonna make 200 rotten bottom reeds. Believes after you've made 200, you're sick. You're ready to put your tails down and just can in your hand, chill out, cup of tea, whatever you, your preference, and chill out. So what I'll do, the way I've always found is, is I'll say, well, right, well, I'll make 200 bodies. So I'll get 200 lengths, I'll put the loops in this up, I'll put the piece of black uh, PVC pipe on them, and I'll put the bead on, and I'll put the bottom loop on, that's one. And I'll do that 200 times. I'll then put them in a bag, and I'll get that bag, and I'll go, and right, see you later, ta -ra. finished with you, hard enough, and I'll walk away. But two days later, I'm fresh and I go, I've got 200 of them things. Now all that's left to go onto there is put the gates on them. So I'll go up and I'll just do 200 gates before you know it, they're done. So that's the way I do it. That's how you get your mind round it and all that, because it is very, very repetitive work, as you, can, as you can imagine. Anyway, just before I go, I'd like to talk to you about this. This is my little invention, to prove a point. I'm not going to name and shame, but a certain angler from Hartlepool, was giving us a bit of stick on how strong my cascade swivels, uh, sorry, my fast links were. I will emphasize the point for those that know Stevie Graham, it is not him, nothing to do with him at all, it's another person part of Hartlepool. And he said that the weight is the other. So what I've done is, I've gotten some club line and I've quadrupled it up. So four times, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, made that. Went and saw a mate and I got an extremely big swivel. And I've got another extreme big swivel and I copied it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my fast links. I'm going to have that there, like that, that there, with my fast link in the middle. And I'm going to talk over it. And I'm going to film it and put it on someone's tackle time and show you how strong 316 grade stainless steel TIG welding rods really are. I'll not be jerking it because it'll just open up. I'm just asking for it. But if done right, nice, steady away, on flat surface, that will pull a car. And I'll prove it is. So that'll be coming very, very soon on an episode of Sandman's Tattle Time. Anyway, that's the end of another Sandman's Tattle Time. I hope you enjoyed me talking about the boxes. I hope it helps the beginners on what to use, what not to use, what to take in your bag. Maybe it's what not to take in your bag. That's all it's about, helping. That's all I want to do is just help people. So... The next episode of Sandman's Tackle Time, I promise, is going to be a double pulley rig. There's a lot of lads requested that. I have talked about it, but there's other things come up like this, and I've slotted this in. But I promise you, within the next week or so, two weeks, I will do a video on the double pulley rig. It's a bit of a complicated rig, but if you stay with it, I'll talk you step by step on how I make them. They're a good piece of kit, shown to, be, shown to me by one of the good match anglers around here, Jody Hope. Nazi stuff, great lad. And I got the idea from him, and uh, I'm going to share it with you. So, anyway, so I'd like to say, I hope you enjoyed that version of Salman's Tattle Time. I'll see you soon on the next uh, instalment. Just take care out there, be safe, use the right stainless steel, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye bye. Boys and girls.
nice little flounder there. Just got us off and running. Bite detection, as you saw yourself, was absolutely fantastic on that uh, sonic surf. Fantastic it was. There it is, one nice flounder, oh, it's about 28, 29 maybe, so we'll go and get